We've done a lot of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Let's, let's look at the possibility of a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so if we started here with bromobenzene and we added a nucleophile, something like the hydroxide anion right here, so negative one formal charge, it could function as a nucleophile. And it would, of course, attack the carbon that is bonded to our halogen here. And so when the nucleophile attacks here, if we're thinking about an SN2 type mechanism, right, it's a concerted mechanism where these electrons should kick off onto the bromine. So if this happened, right, we would get our benzene ring and we would get now the OH has substituted in for the bromine, and the bromine has left in the form of an anion, right? So the bromide anion here, which has a negative one formal charge and is relatively stable on its own, so it's a decent leaving group. So the problem with this is that um, when our nucleophile is attacking this carbon right here, this is an sp2 hybridized carbon, which is part of this benzene ring, of course, and the benzene ring is going to get in the way uh, of the nucleophile attack via an SN2 type mechanism. And so because of that ring, because you're working with an sp2 hybridized carbon, the nucleophile can't attack in the proper orientation. And so the, an SN2 mechanism is not possible. So SN2 does not occur at an sp2 hybridized carbon. And so this reaction doesn't proceed this way. Uh, what about an SN1 type mechanism? So if we thought about if we thought about an SN1 type mechanism, we know the first step in that is dissociation. So these electrons in here are coming off onto the bromine, and so we can go ahead and draw our benzene ring. And since we took a bond away from the carbon that's bonded to the bromine, right, that would get a plus one formal charge like that. And so we form a carbocation. The problem is that this is a very unstable carbocation. We can't really draw any resonance structures for it. And so since it's an unstable carbocation, it's not likely to form. And so an SN1 type mechanism is highly unlikely. It is actually possible if you have an incredible leaving group. But uh, for our purposes, we'll say it's extremely unlikely. So SN2 is out, SN1 is out, and so you might think that you can't do a nucleophilic aromatic substitution, but as a matter of fact, um, you can. And uh, let's take a look at the criteria in order to do so. So your ring must have an electron withdrawing group, so withdrawing some electron density from the ring. We have that here. Of course, this nitro group is electron withdrawing. The ring must have a leaving group, and we just saw how our halogen here can act as a leaving group. The leaving group is ortho or para to the electron withdrawing group. Well, in, in this case, those two groups are both ortho to each other. So, so this molecule could undergo nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so let's think about, once again, our hydroxide functioning as the nucleophile. So we have our negatively charged hydroxide anion functioning as a nucleophile, right? Attacking the carbon, once again, that's bonded to our halogen. This time we're going to uh, we're going to move some electrons around. So these pi electrons are going to move into here to form a double bond, and these electrons are going to move out onto the oxygen. So let's go ahead and show the result of all those electrons moving. So we have our ring. Right, we have our pi electrons here. We have our bromine still attached to the ring. So let's go ahead and put those lone pairs of electrons on it. And now we have an OH attached to our ring too, like that. So let's put those lone pairs of electrons on. Now our nitrogen is double bonded to our ring, like that. The nitrogen is still bonded to an oxygen on the right. The oxygen on the right still has a negative one formal charge. And now the nitrogen is bonded to an oxygen on the left with also with a negative one formal charge like that. The nitrogen itself has a plus one formal charge. So let's see if we can show the movement of all of those electrons here. And so if I show these electrons in magenta, right, on our hydroxide anion, those, you could think about them as being this bond now. And these pi electrons in here, like that, right, these you could think about moving out to here to form a pi bond with the nitrogen. And then finally, these electrons right in here, right, moved out onto this oxygen on the left to give it a negative one formal charge. And so the first step in this mechanism is the addition of the nucleophile, right? So let me go ahead and write that. So
so it's the addition step where we add our nucleophile to the ring and when you do that you're of course adding electrons to the ring and those and that negative charge that you're adding actually ends up on this oxygen here right so this oxygen has a negative one formal charge it's able to stabilize that since it's very electronegative and so the presence of your electron withdrawing group right withdraw some electron density from the ring it allows some of that electron density to be temporarily stored on your electron withdrawing group and that stabilizes this intermediate here you can actually draw some other resonance structures but this is the one that we're most concerned with the one showing the negative charge on the oxygen so this uh, once again this electron withdrawing group is able to stabilize that negative charge that was added to the ring and it's only able to stabilize it because it is ortho to the leaving group and so in our next step Right, so in our next step, we're going to show the leaving group leaving. So this is the elimination step. So the elimination of the leaving group. And again, that nitro group was temporarily holding on to some of that, to, to that negative charge and those electrons, and they're gonna move back into here, which would push these electrons back into here. And then these electrons would kick off onto your bromine. And so we can go ahead and show the final product now where we have our benzene ring and the bromine has left in the form of the bromide anion, so we have an OH attached to our ring, and now we have our nitro group back, right, the way it looked before, with a negative one formal charge on this oxygen, and this, uh, this oxygen over here double bonded to the nitrogen, the nitrogen having a plus one formal charge. So the electrons in green over here on this structure, so these electrons moved back into here, right, to form this bond, and the electrons in blue, right, move back into here to reform your ring this way. And, uh, and we're done. We've seen that the OH has substituted in for the halogen here. So this is called the addition elimination mechanism. And you can see why. First you add your nucleophile, and then that electron density is temporarily stored in the electron withdrawing group, and it comes off again to eliminate your halogen like that. All right, so that was an example of um, a situation where the two groups are ortho to each other. Let's do one. Let's do one where the two groups are para to each other. So let's look at this next example here. And so once again, we have an electron withdrawing group, our nitro group. We have a leaving group, our halogen, and um, and so therefore we can perform nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so I'm going to use the same nucleophiles before. I'm going to use hydroxide. So we have a negative one formal charge, right? And our nucleophile is going to attack, of course, the carbon that is bonded to our leaving group, our halogen, which would push these electrons over to here, which would push these electrons over to here, and then that pushes these electrons off onto our oxygen once again. So let's go ahead and show, again, all of those electrons after they have mo moved here. So we have our, our bromine still attached to our ring, right? Our OH is now attached to our ring like that. So it would have two lone pairs of electrons on it. And we have some pi electrons here, pi electrons here. Nitrogen is, is once again double bonded to our ring now. It's bonded to this oxygen on the left, which has a negative one formal charge. And the oxygen on the right now has a negative one formal charge like that with this such with this nitrogen here being positively charged. So two negatively charged oxygens and one positively charged nitrogen. And so once again, this was the addition step, the addition of the nucleophile to the ring. And now that negative charge, right, when we added some electrons to our ring, that negative charge is, is partially residing on this oxygen here. And so our electron withdrawing group stabilizes this intermediate. The next step, of course, is elimination. And so if these electrons move back into here, right, that would push these electrons back into here, which pushes these electrons over to here. And then these electrons come off onto our onto our leaving group. And so the bromide anion leaves, and we now have our OH has substituted in for it. So we have our ring, we now have our OH on there, and we have, of course, our nitro group. So over here, double bonded to this oxygen. This nitrogen is a single bond to this oxygen, 
and negative one formal charge and a plus one formal charge like that. And so this is an example of the addition elimination mechanism where your electron withdrawing group and your leaving group are para to each other. If you try to do this where the two groups are meta to each other, you'll see that it doesn't work. Um, you can't show that electron density out onto this oxygen. You can't show your electrons moving around to do that. So it's only when those groups are either ortho or para to each other.